August 6, 2012 edition of What We're Learning, the Education Technology Department podcast that shares ideas for technology use in your classroom. I'm Katie Blunt, and today I'll be talking about engagement emergencies, activating the high-tech couch potato generation. This podcast is based on a session I attended at ISTE 2012 in San Diego. The content comes from Annette Lamb. You can access her workshop resources at http colon slash slash eduscapes.com slash sessions slash emergency. This summer at the ISTE, International Society for Technology and Education, conference, I attended a three-hour workshop focused on activating students of the high-tech couch potato generation. I think a lot of parents and teachers worry about our tech-savvy students doing nothing but sitting and staring at their computers or other electronic devices all day, rather than getting up, getting active, and getting involved. This workshop proved to me that using technology does not mean merely sitting. Teachers can and should plan technology-enhanced lessons that get students more active, more involved, and more excited about learning, and more in touch with the world. The first thing Annette talked about was VARC, Visual, Auditory, Reading, and Kinesthetic. She talked about mixing these modalities with video to engage students' active senses, to um, focus on content within context, and to bring in relevant technology to the classroom. In any technology-enhanced lesson, teachers can give their students a variety of learning experiences, including kinesthetic experiences. The combination of visual, auditory, reading, and kinesthetic learning experiences increases the number of exposures students have to content and allows them to process and repeat it in a variety of ways. For example, when choosing to show a video to introduce new content, a teacher can do more than just have students watch the video. Students can view the video, then review the video with specific questions or ideas to focus on then get up and try what was taught or demonstrated in the video. Try having students use video along with manipulatives and off-computer activities that allow them to demonstrate their understanding. Have students participate in active thinking assignments before, during, and after viewing a video clip to make what they are learning from the clip more relevant and more clear. Next, Annette talked about physical and virtual experiences. Computers are no longer just screens and keyboards. Computers are interactive devices now, and they can be used to access information in a variety of ways that activate students. Following are some examples of ways your students can use technology to learn and activate their senses. Auditory activities. In the Google Chrome browser, students can use the microphone available on Google.com to conduct searches by speaking their search term instead of typing it. So here's an activity idea. Assign each student to research something specific about an animal, what it eats, its habitat, things like that by speaking their search into the Google microphone. Then have them verbally share what they have learned with a small group. Visual. In the Google Chrome browser, students can click and drag a photo into the search box on images.google.com. An activity idea to go with this, uh, you could give each student an item, money from another country, for example, and have them find out what it is or gather information about it. This would be a great attention getter that would give students background information before reading a novel, conducting an experiment, or learning about a historical event. Annette also talked about physical and virtual connections. Another way to connect students' technology use to active engagement is to help them make connections between the virtual world and the real world. One way to help them make these connections is by using creative work examples found online and created by others for inspiration, then having students create their own product. Uh, Following are some ideas of how online examples can be used as inspiration for student creations. 
we can focus on virtual place connecting to real-world place. For example, have students learn about a place they have only seen in a movie or only seen on the web by researching it. You can introduce students to online maps like Google Street View, Google Map Making, and Google Trail Views. Talk with your students about how the maps were made and how they are useful. Then, have students make their own maps. Try connecting virtual story tools to stories the students are actually creating. You can use Rory Story Cube's app on an iOS device to generate ideas for a story. You can have students create storyboards on sites like Storybird or Comic Creator. You can also try connecting the virtual world and the real world when creating student exhibits. For example, students could build a physical exhibit, like a wax museum, a diorama, or a display board, with a recorded narration to go with it. Try using sites like Voki, Vokaroo, or Blabberize to create the narration video. Link the recorded narration using a QR code that can be displayed next to the physical exhibit. Another idea is to use QR code to take a physical exhibit beyond the physical display. Have students create a list of questions to include with their display. Have them create a website that houses the answers to the questions. You could generate a QR code to display next to each question that directs peers to the web link where they can find the information they need to answer the questions. You can also connect video virtually and in the real world. Have students view online videos, music videos, instructional videos, etc. Then have them create their own video projects using what they saw as inspiration. Word clouds are also another great way to connect virtual and physical worlds. Have students view murals, timelines, infographics, word clouds, and word shapes online. For example, the Lincoln-Douglas debates, student bullying, and the presidential timeline are all great word clouds found online. Then have students create their own using sites like Wordle, TikiTalki, and Imagine Chef's Word Mosaic. Data collection is another great example. Have students conduct their own data collection or use existing data sources like Gallup or FedStats and use online tools like Create-A-Graph or ChartGo to organize their results. Interactives can help as well. Interactives are great as well. Have students make computer interactives come alive with connected, off-computer activities. Combine hands-on activities with data collection tools. For ideas, check out Thinkfinity activities, Illuminations activities, and Science Netlinks activities. For more ideas like these, check out Annette Lamb's page about physical and virtual connections. So how can these types of activities really benefit students and increase learning? Technology-enhanced multimedia learning projects that connect the physical and virtual worlds can provide opportunities for students to entertain, emote, inform, instruct, challenge, engage, provoke, and persuade. Thanks to Annette Lamb for her great ideas and for reinforcing for me that technology tools are all about activation and creation. For more ideas, again, check out Annette's Engagement Emergencies website. I'm Katie Blunt, and thank you for listening to the What We're Learning podcast. To view our What We're Learning blog and to access all the information from the Education Technology Department at the Canyon School District, go to prolearning.canyonsdistrict.org.